Hello all, uh, I'm Timothy and uh, thank you all for being here and uh, this is going to be a wonderful time of learning and uh, we, are, we are starting on time so that is a good thing and uh, we also have people from uh, different parts of the world being here and uh, I know most of you are really excited and you want to know what's going to happen in this webinar because of the title which says Digital Religion. And uh, also, uh, we have excellent resource people here in line to uh, share with you on different uh, uh, points today, and we will be able to learn a lot from them. So uh, let's move on, and uh, I'm just going to introduce um, our uh, keynote speakers at this time, and we have four uh, people lined up, and they are, they are amazing, and they are actually like experts in this field. And uh, when you look at the order, it's not in uh, the order is because this is the way they are going to appear. So that's why I've actually like put it in this order. And uh, last but not the least, Mr. Nachi Lazarus, he is uh, a good friend of mine as such a kind and a humble person. He has written a book called The Connected Church. It's available on Amazon, so you can go and purchase it and read it. It's a beautiful book. He has worked in in uh, uh, with different organizations, helping them set up live uh, streaming. And right now, uh, he is uh, the operations head or the lead for uh, Media Impact International uh, India. And uh, also, he's the co-founder of Open Minds Agency. Uh, he's an excellent marketing analyst, consultant, and a keynote speaker. So these are the uh, 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 fantastic people who are here um, to present on different topics with you all in this webinar, and I'm so glad to have them. And without uh, uh, any delay, let's move into the next section, which is about Indian scenario, especially like uh, I would feel like Nachi is an expert because he is, he is into this live streaming and also uh, social uh, media marketing and all that. So he knows the trends very well. So he's going to present with us uh, the social media trends. Um, so it will be very informative. Uh, so stay and uh, uh, enjoy. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you for uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, more than anything, it's been a time of learning for me just sitting through these amazing presentations. And uh, what what an incredible amount of uh, wisdom that we've seen here. So it's a joy for me to uh, bring you all from that level of uh, wisdom and knowledge to the ground level of telling you what is actually happening with the trends. So uh, it's not very easy to speak after somebody like uh, Frank Preston, but I'm gonna try my best. So uh, this is digital and social media trends. And I'm gonna give you uh, the practical things of what's going on. We'll try to move as quickly as possible as we've covered a lot of uh, ground already. So uh, I'm, I have to. I have a very specific agenda in mind, which is basically just two parts. One is what is working currently, current trends, and what is coming, the future trends. So that's all I'm going to uh, cover. And uh, first, in the part one, what is working currently, I would like to start with the behavioral trends. So what we're seeing right now in uh, the digital and the social media space is people's behavior is changing. And, and we've seen in the last three uh, sessions of why that is and how, uh, you know, the mind is being influenced and so on. But I just want to give you facts here. I'm not a theologian, so I'm not going to go into any of that. I'm just going to give you the facts of what's happening and also give you some windows of opportunity that we are seeing on the ground. I run a digital agency day in and day out. I work uh, on campaigns and uh, strategies uh, exclusively for uh, Christian uh, ministries and media and uh, churches and nonprofits. So that's all I do. And that's all I've been doing for the last 14 years out of the 20 years of uh, marketing and advertising experience I've had. So uh, this is something that we see on an ongoing uh, basis. The first is evolution of digital comfort. So when we look at the audience, we are seeing that the audience is starting to get comfortable with uh, digital, which was not the case before COVID. Uh, before COVID, people knew uh, digital space. They knew that this was important, but there was that comfort level was missing. But now we are, say, are seeing that people are starting to get comfortable and there are various reasons. And uh, you know, the statistics is uh, COVID uh, numbers have started pushing India's monthly active internet users. You heard a lot of statistics from um, uh, from Timothy at the beginning, so I'm not going to, going to uh, go into any of that. All I want to say is 
this growth is, uh, is, is unprecedented. We've never seen anything like this specifically in India. Now, all I want to uh, show you in this point is the key drivers behind this comfort factor. Why are people comfortable suddenly out of the blue? A couple of things. One is the work culture. I mean, predominantly, we are a working country, right? We take our work very seriously and we are called the back office of the world for a uh, good reason, right? We are, we are hard workers. And uh, our culture is defined based on what happens at our work. And what's happening at our work? Zoom is happening at our work. So not just for us, but for all, everyone. I mean, IT, healthcare, you name it, Zoom is happening. Zoom is just one tool, but I'm saying Google Meet, whatever. So people are starting to be, uh, adopt and become comfortable with the digital space because they, uh, their work demands it from them. So that is a big driver. The other driver is peer pressure and learning because they see other people do it, they want to do it. For example, uh, how people post on uh, social media, uh, this trend is starting to uh, pick up. Somebody will post something and then they'll say, I want to post like that because somebody else is posting, right? They want to, they want to post, they post vacation pictures. You all want to post vacation pictures. They want to post, uh, you know, a joke. Everybody wants to post a joke. So there is a peer pressure and learning happening at a practical level uh, and uh, habit formation. This is, this is fascinating for me to see what is happening with habits. And this is one reason I believe that what we are doing here with digital religion conference and all that is happening in the Christian space is, uh, is completely uh, what I call as a, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a God thing. I mean, I feel God is behind this whole thing as this moves on because people's habits are changing. People are starting to watch, for example, people are starting to watch more uh, television that is connected to the internet. People are starting to watch more of YouTube. People are starting to watch more of uh, online. And that habit formation with Netflix and Amazon is going to help uh, the Christian work that's going to come up in the days to come because we are uh, up people of the word and the word is at the basis of any media content that's being created out there. So I think it's a great opportunity that we are looking at in terms of habit formation and then connectivity, cheap data. Most of us know data is not a problem in India, at least in India, it's the, it's the lowest cost when compared to many parts of the world, we have free internet and then low cost internet. So uh, we are at that point. And then devices, as you know, smartphones, you get like 1,500, 2,000 bucks, you get uh, phones. Uh, so, uh, that's the, these are the key drivers behind that. The second uh, trend that I want to talk about, current trend uh, in terms of behavior, people's behavior, is the availability of extra time. Because we are not in traffic, we are not going to offices, most of us are in lockdown, there is extra time that is there in the hands of people. And uh, this is what Timothy talked about, the six hour, 30 minute uh, statistics that he spoke about. Uh, this, is the, this is actually the root one. So uh, just wanted to mention that. And then the third behavioral trend is a season of unique needs. Uh, people have unique needs at this point. So this is something I think will be fascinating for all of us who are working in this space because we are all about meeting needs, right? That, that's the essence of Christian living. So here are some of the needs that I see and uh, based on uh, research as well, as well, I don't want to go into all the uh, research quotes, but these are the top needs at this point. It's a new season with new needs versus an emotional need. People are wanting more assurance. So all of you in ministry uh, make note that people need assurance. They, they are, they are, it's, it's all uh, uncertain. There's times of uncertainty and people want something that they can stand on. So assurance. And then uh, there is a mental need, which is of information. People want more information. Uh, that's why they're spending more time on news uh, channels because they want more information. Because uh, the more there's uncertainty, it is the information that brings your mind to a stable state. Uh, you know, from a psychological perspective. So the more information you give, whether it is right or wrong, that's a different story. But, uh, you know, you got to keep feeding information into the human mind. So that's a, that's a big need. Relational need, love. Uh, part of the reason we are saying, you know, we need to have online communities and uh, love being shared uh, on internet because this is what people are seeing. And, and we heard from Frank how uh, people in Indonesia are responding probably because they don't find love elsewhere, right? Uh, they are coming to the church uh, context as well. So relational love and financial knowledge, people are starting to think about the downturn, financial crisis, and they're saying, I want more knowledge about what's going to happen. You know, what should I do with my money? Where should I invest? Or how should I save? Or how do I make money? And what if I lose my job? So all that kind of stuff is happening. And then professionally, we are seeing a need for stability because people are always constantly afraid that their 
uh, they're going to run out of job or run out of business. So these are some of the top needs. I just want to throw it out there as a trend uh, that we are seeing, especially for the digital on the social media space, because digital and social media is where people want to come and find answers for these needs. So we as uh, ministers, as people who work in this space, need to be aware of what's going on there. And then moving on to my uh, next subsection of the current trends is the industry trends. So I'm going to talk to you about what's happening actually in the industry, what is working and what is creating an impact in terms of social media. What is working on social media? First is stories. So stories is simply a short form of content, a 15 second content. Uh, typically 15 seconds on different platforms. There is Instagram stories, there's Facebook stories, there is Snapchat stories, uh, there is TikTok, not in India, but around the world. Uh, and then now, um, yesterday, last night, hot news is Instagram has released another format called Reels, which is exactly like TikTok. So TikTok goes and Instagram comes and says, we want to replace it. So they just launched this whole um, a tool called Reels, which is another short form. So basically these stories are short form, temporary content that comes in and goes away in 24 hours. So this is the hottest thing now. Look at the statistics. Every single day in 24 hours, 500 million people consume Facebook, Messenger, uh, Facebook and Messenger stories. Instagram stories, another 500 million. So totally a billion views uh, for Facebook, uh, between Facebook Messenger and Instagram, add another half a, bi half a million, uh, five, half a billion view views on WhatsApp, WhatsApp status. So this stories form of content is absolutely booming, which is basically a very transparent, very real kind of a thing. I just want to give you a quick overview of what it is. It is basically showcasing your organization, showcasing your brand, your culture, uh, your backstage. You're saying, this is what I did. This is what I had, uh, you know, for lunch or dinner, or this is what's happening. For example, I put a story last week about uh, my, uh, you know, my new haircut and what happened. And it was a, it was an accident and it was a disaster actually that uh, because of which I had a hair. You know, it's a silly thing. But what happens is here, listen to me uh, carefully, because even though it's, a, it's silly, what's happening is it's helping people see the real you. You know, now that is connecting with people because people want realism. They want real, they want the authentic stuff and they want to see that. So people are uh, wanting to do that. And it's not about being selling or, you know, pushing anything or our ideas or theology. It's about just being ourselves. And so that is something that is, currently working. I'm just laying out what is working at this point. Uh, the second is what, what is working is strategic ad campaigns. So advertising campaigns are working very well, uh, simply because of the ability to target. So just to give you an idea, Facebook will help you target a group of people in the next three streets from where you are. And you can tell not just everybody in the next three streets, I want to target uh, people between 18 years and 24 years old, and only those people will see. And you can say, I want 18 to 24 years, only male, only female. People who read a particular magazine, people who watch a particular movie, people who are interested in this. I am telling you, Facebook and Google, they know more about us than we do. They have, uh, for example, Facebook has 10,000 signals that they use to uh, point an ad uh, on, on somebody. So the, it's an incredible amount of database and big data that they are uh, working with that gives them this ability of micro-targeting, which is what is also a constant debate in terms of privacy and so on. But when you look at it on the other side and look at the opportunity, it's incredible. Like you've got a message, you can, like one of the things that we do with churches is asking churches and uh, church leaders and ministers to break down their messages for different personas, right? Which means the same message, probably a message on say, uh, you know, on, on creation from Genesis chapter one could be in a different light to a 18 to 24 year old than to a 28 to 35 year old than to a 35 to 55 year old. Now you can actually speak a different version of the same message and have it delivered to them uh, individually at a certain point in time through Facebook ads. And that video will only be visible to them. You're not posting that on the page. You're not posting it publicly. You would actually send it to those people. And only those people will see, just imagine the ability of you able, uh, able to influence that mind at such a micro targeted level. 
I always joke about it saying Paul would have given anything to live in this age because he would have, you know, contextualized his entire message for like, you know, a hundred different group of audience. That's what uh, we need to do. So it's, uh, it's an incredible thing what's happening with ads. I just want to give you a couple of uh, 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 views on because people are saying, oh, you know, ads are going down, you know, because of COVID and all that spending is going down. These are some of the statistics that we see with World Economic Forum, where there's a lot of uh, downward trend in terms of spending, like in the US, $107 billion uh, ad spend gone down by 10%, 8% is projected to go down. Generally, this is what is uh, being shown. And uh, if you see this part of, uh, let me just show you, you look at this part of uh, the thing where you see the financial crisis, the global financial crisis in 2018, uh, 2008. And then now we see the COVID, which is, which is in 2019. So generally these are, these are the pictures that you see, but, but what I want to show you is this, right? Here is a very, very interesting, different angle to the whole thing where you see, yes, there has been a decrease. Yes, there has been a, 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 a slowdown of spending, but look what is happening in this side of the graph, right? This is 2020 uh, reports. And uh, the right side, you see the online classified, you see the TV, you see radio, you see newspaper, all of them going down. Uh, they were projected to grow a little bit. These were the projections. And, uh, and then of course, uh, because of COVID, they all went down. But look at, look at social media, look at online video, look at online display and search. The projections were much higher, like 20% for social media, but it still grew by 9.8%, right? Online display ads projection was 14.3, but it still grew by 2.1%. So what I'm saying is there is a, a tremendous amount of growth, even though uh, it is a slow growth, but it's still growing, gives us a picture of what is actually happening uh, because these numbers are very big, these are being blown up and say, and generally we get a feeling that ads are not working, but that is not the case. All right. So, and uh, ads in a sense, not just regular ads, but also targeted and tactical ads. I call them the TT ad campaigns. And uh, I speak about this in the book. Uh, and uh, this is, this is more of uh, what we call as uh, the funnel method that uh, uh, Frank was talking about, but from an advertising perspective. So you, you, you don't just target a, a large group. You actually target a very focused, narrow group. The more you do that, the numbers might be lesser, but the responses will be more. So the, the, the niche you go, the better is the, is the size or the proportion of your funnel. Uh, because, and that's exactly what we want. We want to reach 1,000 people and end up with 100 people responding rather than uh, reaching a uh, lakh people and thousand people responding. So your funnel becomes very narrow, which is not what we want. So that's targeted. Tactical is again, uh, being very strategic about who you want to reach, how you want to say it and all that. So these are some of the things that are working. Uh, more time of the audience is also equal to more inventory of ads in the sense uh, there's, there's just simply more space for people to show ads to more people because the more people are online, right? It's, it's almost like a newspaper. You just have 100 newspaper given to 100 people. Now you have 100 newspaper and there are 1,000 people in the tea shop waiting to read that newspaper. So there's just simply more inventory, which means you can actually print 500 more newspapers and people will still consume. So there's a higher uh, inventory of ads and absence of big brands. In the US and even here in India, companies like Unilever have said, we are going to stop releasing ads because of budgets, which is an opportunity for ministries and uh, Christian organizations to jump in with a smaller budget and make it happen. So that's the advertising. Search and emails are another trend that's really working still. Uh, it's surprising you would think in the age of social media, search is still relevant, very relevant, because as you know, you pick up the phone and search for something, this is the first thing you find is the listing, right? So search via map, search for, for, for the name, type of work near me, people are constantly searching. So as a ministry, uh, if you look at the referrals, this particular graph shows how people are uh, finding referral information. And earlier, Facebook or social media used to be on top, but now you see uh, Facebook is at the second place and Google is number one. So uh, that, is, that is starting to change and Google is starting to become a uh, simply because people are losing trust on social media and they're going more towards Google search, which they feel is much more uh, trustworthy. 
All right. And uh, quickly on my second part, I'm going to close uh, in a few minutes from now, uh, which is the future trends. So I want to point you to three big future trends that's coming that could influence the way we do church, the way we think about uh, religion, digital religion, uh, the way we think about how people uh, consume our content uh, and all that we do. One is the dominance of private media. So right now, private media is big even now, but it's going to absolutely dominate the future. What is a private media? As against social media, in which there's a large group of people, private media is a closed space. Even uh, in a closed space, there could be a large group of people. Some of the churches and uh, ministries that we work with have 20,000 people in their WhatsApp broadcast list. So you know WhatsApp has a broadcast list facility, which means it's not just groups. You can actually send one message on WhatsApp and make it go to everybody as an individual message. So uh, there are churches that do that. And uh, even Facebook groups, uh, Facebook Messenger can have a large group. So this is not about the size. It's about the way people communicate using these apps is extremely private. And this is going to be the next big thing. So when you think of um, you, you know, preaching the gospel, sharing the good news, these are tools that you need to definitely consider because this is going to be something that people trust, they use, and they keep using in uh, the days to come. So um, this will be a big trend. And the second uh, future trend that's going to be very big is this growth of social commerce. Uh, commerce that is enabled by social media. And uh, uh, for example, Facebook and Instagram rolled out shops, what we call a uh, uh, Facebook shop in May, uh, mid-May, they rolled it out, uh, which means just think about that. People are scrolling through Facebook and Instagram. They can actually look at products and everything and actually make uh, payments to buy them without getting out of Facebook. So this is what Facebook is driving at. And this will happen within Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. And uh, the interesting thing is, this is the same scenario that applies for nonprofits as well, because they are bringing in donations in, in there, and you can do the same thing with donations. So the way people give, the way, way people give for the gospel, the way people support uh, nonprofits and the ministries that they're working with is going to completely change the way, uh, the, and, and, Facebook, and uh, social media is gonna be a tool of influence for that as well, not just the message of the gospel, but also the, uh, the operational element kind, how it, it happens is also going to change. So this is an interesting statistics here in India. I just wanted to point out in the same uh, Hootsuite report, uh, here is the report I, I want you to see. Uh, out of all the internet users, 60% of them made an online purchase via a mobile device. Think about that. This is India. And in India, people actually paid money to buy something. And out of that, out of the 100%, 60% of internet users actually made a purchase. So you can understand what's happening in the mobile commerce ecosystem. People are not afraid to transact on mobile anymore. And that is mainly because of the wallets, right? Uh, Paytm and uh, you know, all, these, all these pay, phone pay and Google pay and all these wallets are becoming a part of everyday life. This is a big trend for you to uh, think about. And uh, the biggest of them all is coming. It's not yet come, which is WhatsApp Pay. WhatsApp Pay is going to be huge. It's already launched in uh, Brazil. In India, it's been tested with a million people, but it's not officially launched. It's just a matter of time. Facebook Pay will be at the center of it and it will enable everything. So this is going to be a game changer because the day WhatsApp launches, it will be a market leader. Paytm took years to build 200 million users. WhatsApp already has 300 million users. And the day they launch, they'll be the number one on that space. So it's gonna be very interesting. Uh, no wonder they've tied up with Reliance. They've invested $5.7 billion on uh, Reliance. And finally, my final point for the day is uh, digital content consolidation. So what's happening in the digital space is content is being consolidated. What do I mean? For example, if anybody has a Amazon Fire TV stick, then uh, what you don't have to do is buy an Apple TV uh, device because Apple TV app is now built into Amazon. Amazon is kind of consolidating all the digital content. So basically, if you see, if you've got an Amazon Fire TV stick, you've got Prime Video, you've got Netflix, you've got YouTube, you've got Hotstar, you've got uh, you know, Apple TV, you've got everything. Now you've got Sun Next and all these things. So what does this mean for the gospel? For what that we are doing is that what it means is this, uh, just if you go back to my previous slide, which I skipped, it shows 
uh, in this pandemic, YouTube TV based views have skyrocketed, which means what? People are starting to consume news in new ways, consume content in new ways on their large television. I mean, we are, we are watching our church you know, message on a large television on YouTube. So uh, this is something that you really need to consider when it comes to social media trends. So the trend of consuming content on a large screen is starting to come, which means you need to think about that. It's not just a mobile anymore. It's also a large screen. So it, you have to play between both. You have to do uh, uh, things for the mobile and you have to do for the last screen as well. So these are some of the big trends that we are seeing. Thank you very much. Stay connected and stay blessed. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much, Nachi. And uh, uh, putting all this together, I want to say one thing. I want to apologize to you all that uh, whatever you, you have experienced, whatever you have learned, uh, maybe we should actually like make it three full day uh, seminar because uh, the content which has been shared over here is so much. And that's the reason why I wanted to apologize. But then uh, I know like everyone who is present over here, even though we are a small group, but then we see people from US, we see people from Egypt and we see people from Delhi and different parts of India uh, present over here representing their ministries. And um, I know like uh, whatever we are learning is going to be very crucial in the way we move forward and uh, the way we are going to actually like uh, 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 design our ministry and take it online. And uh, even with Nachi, whatever he shared, I mean, like that's uh, lots of information about what is in trend now and what is about to come. So we can be prepared and we can think uh, uh, well in advance so that we can design things um, in a way that which is going to be available and what is available right now. And what we are going to do now is I have uh, two announcements before we get into the question and answer uh, time. And uh, this is the time where you can actually type in your questions and send it to us. And I have only two questions right now. And if you have any more questions, please uh, uh, post it in chat and we will, sh we will uh, direct it to the, to the panelists. And uh, the first one is uh, the feedback form for this webinar is available and the link will be posted in the chat. It's already posted. So you can just click on the link and get to the feedback form. It's a Google form. We made sure that the questions are very, very simple and it'll take a very short time for you to fill it. And uh, we want you to fill it because uh, your feedback is very, very much important for us to design our upcoming webinar. So we have few upcoming webinars, which is uh, in line. And um, uh, you, you could see it in the screen very soon. And we have two more webinars, which are in the pipeline, as you could see. The first one is about the Jesus India needs. Uh, getting back to uh, Grace, where Solomon Asadas is going to host it. And then we also have another webinar called Finding God in uh, uh, Crisis, which is going to be hosted by John Marshall. And if you look at it, all these webinars are in academic level. We want to we actually wrestle with this thought and see, not just learn the technology, but even uh, the uh, theology and Bible behind every single action that which we are getting involved in. And that's what we want to do. And we are trying to attempt to uh, bring all this knowledge to you and uh, hope you can share this information with your friends and uh, bring them for the next uh, uh, webinars too. And another thing which I want to share is just take this webinar as a start. Whatever we have done now is just a start. And based on the feedback that which we are, which we are going to receive, we will design a specific uh, uh, webinar which will be more technical and also there will be lots of other uh, information which you could use it, especially for your church, in your context, in your culture. How could you actually create a strategy and plan a way to take the gospel out using the technology which is available in our hand right now? I hope you all are actually uh, filling in the form and you must have uh, uh, done it already. And so many of you are actually thanking for this webinar. And the questions which I have, I'm just going to uh, uh, direct it to the panelists. There are only two questions at the moment. The first question is directed to uh, Sam. And uh, Sam, based on whatever you just shared, uh, you will be unmuted and just accepted. And whatever has been shared, the question which is, which is asked right now is, is this a transition uh, from place which is physical to a space which is non-physical 
And how does this relate to Jesus' words to the Samaritan woman? A time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, which you can find in John chapter 4, verse 21. All right. Um, am I audible? Yes. Yes, okay. So, <clears throat> as we have just discussed, it's a transition time. Yes, in a way, it is a transition because uh, so far, we have relied on the you know traditional gathering in a particular place but uh, the trend as you see or uh, the demand or the new uh, technologies have uh, given this new opportunity for us to uh, seek the truth in different formats and so one of the way we are going to do in the future is that you know we will assimilate knowledge of god and spirituality in this virtual online but at the same time, as I said, uh, the offline is not unconnected with the online. So there will be a um, simultaneous uh, give and take policy between the offline and the online. And both will, um, what do you call, uh, improvise each other. And uh, of course, in the near future, we have to work on uh, several guidelines uh, to make both uh, authentic. So one of the questions that is often raised is the authenticity of this online digital religion. So one has to really you know, know it, but not just speaking for uh, the Christians, but seeing the trend in other religions, uh, you know, we have to admit that um, definitely there is a big change. As the, you, know, you have also mentioned that John chapter 4, uh, there is a time where uh, people will uh, worship uh, everywhere. And uh, very truly said, you know, the cyber space uh, is now available. And uh, I've uh, read an article which said there is a real estate on the cyber space. There is a website, you know, they are creating cyber spaces uh, where you can buy a particular, you know, a kind of a uh, physical place, but it's on the cyber space. You know, you can buy that land, you can build your, uh, you know, a church and you can walk in. And this is the future. And you can use your avatar to go. And so this um, virtual reality, augmented reality, is also going to come very soon into our church and uh, our ministry. So we have to be ready because this, as all of us have said, you know, it's a great opportunity. Don't just see it as a threat. It's an opportunity. Maybe God is pushing us uh, to take the word online, to make it available, even uh, places where we cannot go, a word can go through uh, this medium. So I think it's a blessing and it's a call and it's a demand from God for us to move into this direction. I hope I answered you. Thank you so much, Sam. And the next question is directed to um, um, uh, Frank. Uh, so Frank, uh, the question is to you and uh, you're gonna send you an invite to unmute. Yeah, you have done it. Okay, the question here is, uh, uh, Frank, um, you stated that the purpose of the church is making disciples. Uh, so the person who have asked this question disagrees with you, uh, where he says that uh, uh, with, when you look at Hebrews chapter 25, it states that let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. <laughs> the gospel is not just informational or transactional, as has been over communicated, it is relational. While that is more challenging to do digitally, it is it is possible. However, there is a temptation to overlie uh, reliant on truth as information. How can digital religion focus on ministry, which is like meeting the needs, not just convert them? Otherwise, the church is no different than Facebook or Instagram. It's a long question. I hope you got the question. Yeah, uh, church uh, can be a capital C church and it can be a little C church. Uh, the little C church is a community of small individuals where the needs are met. They do need this face-to-face -face connection uh, relationship. Also in that small community of church is where we encourage each other with loving good deeds uh, has the whole book of Hebrews 10, 24 talks about, but also the rest of Hebrews, which uh, is uh, about who Christ is and uh, uh, 
uh, would no longer sacrifice and righteousness by faith and things of that nature. So there needs to be teaching where everyone teaches each other. In the capital C church, the com greater community, we're affecting society with the church. And uh, uh, this gives us more opportunity like the printing press, like the Roman road to affect the whole society. So uh, I am not saying, I, I would not, I would not say that we're in disagreement with each other. I think we're just looking at it from a different C, C size, either little C or big C, which I for, firmly believe there needs to be community by which we meet face to face. Uh, and, uh, and when I talked about uh, what's happening as we moving from individualistic conversion to more group conversion, these are the small C churches being shaped and developed and built uh, from the social, from the internet usage. So yeah, there needs to be training, needs to be discipleship, there needs to be meeting each other's needs, uh, the one another's that the scriptures talks about, all that needs to occur. Um, but it doesn't need to be limited to, um, as Samuel talks about, uh, space and place. Place is going to be kind of a little squishy. Where is place? Is place going to be the building or is it going to be my house? Um, but space will maintain uh, the idea. will still be out there. So uh, I appreciate your, your pushback. I love pushback uh, to help me be better clear on the de definition. So thank you for that. that thank you so much, uh, Frank. And we all learn, I mean, like a lot uh, from you all. I mean, the panelists are amazing. And we want to thank each one of you, Bob, Frank, Nachi, and also Sam for being here. And um, it's pretty much like thank you for educating us on this particular uh, uh, field. Uh, for some of us, it's very new. And uh, even I would say like there are plenty over here who are doing ministry among uh, the rural areas. And they have asked questions from this morning. I'm receiving lots of questions. And then I'm going to direct it, direct it to you via email to gather your, gather your information answers and pass it on to them. Will that be all right uh, with all the panelists? Yeah, I'll do that. And right now we have only two questions, but then uh, questions have started coming in from this morning. Uh, what, what could we do with the rural Christians where they do not have uh, technology available, but then they can also not gather together? And uh, can we use uh, popular um, uh, evangelist programs and then direct them from there to the local congregation. So there are so many things which they are thinking and they are wrestling with. And uh, uh, this is just a start. Let's say like we have ignited the fire and let's hope that this will spread and uh, people will actually get more aware of this uh, 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 possibility and opportunity which is available uh, right now in this, uh, in this field. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, uh, we are going to close now. And uh, it's already like 9-11. We have, we have gone almost uh, a half an hour over, but uh, so glad that everyone stayed back. And uh, that shows that how um, uh, valuable this particular learning is. So at this time, I would like to ask uh, to close this webinar with prayer. So I would like to ask Nathaniel if he could do, uh, if you could pray and close this webinar. Nathaniel from GNPI. I'd be happy to do that. Lord, thank you for gathering us all today from all across uh, your world. And thank you for reminding us uh, during these past few months that very much this is your world and we are all in the palm of your hand. Um, as we've seen great forces that are beyond our control, we know that still you are in ultimate power and that you shape all of these things, uh, these challenges that have come to us have not necessarily come from you, but you redeem all of them. And Lord, as we learn more about how the church can be implemented online, what that should look like, how that can change us and how we relate to each other through the church and how we can help grow the church, Lord, we pray that that ultimately draws us closer and closer to your heart and that we can adopt that, adapt that to ourselves and become uh, more devoted in our work for you. So bless each individual that joined today. Thank you for the uh, all the great men that 
educated us as well. And thank you for their work. And I pray that you continue to guide them in each and everything that they are doing. But Lord, we just continue to look to you and to follow your path set out for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and uh, hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.